you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're seeing the live version of this, our we updated with Windows update this morning and uh, it's blown out our cameras. No matter how many restarts we do, we can't get it fixed. So if you're watching it live, I do have the beautiful Rachel Greener. She is on the show to talk to us about her newest book that she has out and we'll be going through that. It's called Making a Baby 22 2021. It just came out. You can order it wherever great fine books are sold. So we'll be talking to her. Thanks for tuning in. Go to youtube.com for chess Chris Voss. Hit the bell notification so you get all the notifications of everything we're doing over there. And you can find out. You can see all the groups we do on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all those great places. Also, go to goodreads.com for us to Chris Vosh. You can see everything we're reading and reviewing over there as well. Today we'll be talking with, as I mentioned before, Rachel Greener. She is a children's book editor from London who has edited fiction, nonfiction, and picture books about everything from the ancient Egyptians and ocean plastics to teenage detectives and zombie goldfish, of all things. I hate the zombie goldfish. That's always the Wednesdays. She wrote this book because she thinks it's important that all children have a chance to see their family story reflected in a book about where babies come from. We all know where they do. Storks, of course. They deliver them at night, I think, uh, in those little bags. I saw that on a cartoon once. So welcome to the show, Rachel. How are you? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. It's been a balmy day here in London, which makes a change because it's been uh, pretty rainy this week. Uh, yeah, your guys' fun part there is the whole, is the whole. it's very cloudy a lot of times there in London. Yes, yeah, and not that we notice really because we're all effectively still in some kind of lockdown, but yeah. There oh, look, you're go. back. You've arrived. And, and, I'm, and I'm back. And uh, clearly my green screen isn't fully over. Got to love updates. There you go. I think we may have resolved it. So, so give us a reason. What motivated you want to write this book? I am actually also the publisher of the book in mm. the UK. So when I was on maternity leave with my first son, I got called in to Nosy Crow, who are the independent British publisher that I work for, to interview for the role of head of nonfiction. And as part of my interview, I was asked to come up with an idea for a children's nonfiction book on any subject that doesn't exist, but that is necessary. It's kind of, I, I had some time to prepare this before the interview. So I was casting around, what am I going to present? What is, what's not already been done? And as I was on maternity leave, obviously babies were on my mind. I knew lots of other people in lots of different circumstances who were trying to start families or wanted to start families, but were facing various barriers. And I thought, I'll read. I'll read the competition that's out there. I'll read the books that were around when I was young and see how stuff's moved on. And it turned out that while there are some really great, super inclusive books out there, I didn't really find any book that actually got down to the biological truth of the matter and but and was appropriate. The storks, right? Because there's a lot of books you can read that are beautifully inclusive and you can read them and they're wonderful. But you could come out of it as a nine-year-old or a seven-year-old and you still actually don't know mm. really how it happens. And I also thought it was really important. Most of the books I read, not all, but most, they only ever referred to a mummy and a daddy. And I thought, what about all the other family stories out there? Who? Mm -hmm. What about all the other children who aren't seeing the story of their adoption or the fact that they, their parents used a surrogate or needed to use a donor sperm or a donor egg? Where are their stories? So I pitched the idea. I got the job. And about six months later, my boss said, when are we seeing this book? So... <laughs> <laughs> so I started working on it. There you go. And you don't wait, you started working on six months after? So uh, I started working on the book about six months <laughs> after I started my job. And but I'm not an expert. Obviously, I'm an I'm a I'm a publisher, I'm an editor. So I just wrote the book that I felt I would want to have seen when I was a mm. kid and the kind mm. of information that I would like to be available for my son who mm. has read the book. He's four. Mm. He hasn't actually read it. He can't read, but I've read it too. And because I'm not an expert, we worked with one of the UK's leading LGBTQ plus charities. We oh, worked nice. with a midwife. <laughs> we worked with a biology teacher. We worked with an ad academic expert who works on cell 
biology. Mm -hmm. So we really tried to cover all bases to make sure that this was a really scientifically accurate book that presented all birth stories on a level playing field. Well, that's probably important too, because there's people nowadays that they're LGBTQ people, they get married and they don't really have a, a normal birthing situation that you would have. And so the surrogates and different things, whatever. So that's important because I would be a kid going, how'd this work? And if, if you've read this book, if your child's read this book, one of the most important things about working in children's publishing is, is the idea that by helping children to read books about a really broad range of subjects, whether that's fiction or nonfiction, you're allowing a child to put themselves in someone else's shoes. And therefore you're really developing not only their worldview, but their sense of empathy mm. because children do only know about their own experiences. But if they've been introduced to other people's experiences from a young age, it's not going to be surprising to them or they're not going to feel like it's, not as good as their own situation because all those situations have already been shown to them. There is no right way to start a family. Every way to start a family is is equal and it's the love that matters. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that do surrogate stuff and then I guess the there's in inferto fertilization, I think, or infer <laughs> So yeah, you book, probably know more than I do. <laughs> yeah, so this book covers it covers sex and it actually explains what happens during sex. And there is a diagram oh. which some people so where we're doing scientific stuff, I'll show you some of the spreads of the book. We pull the information out into a round a sort of round also like a sort of device to hold the scientific information. So here we've got lots of naked people, for example. I'm not but you can see the kind of cross section of a womb and of a penis. So you can understand the kind of technology and we do have a page where there are people having and there is a roundel that kind of explains what's happening mm -hmm. but young for, for very young children that read this those images they're beyond them they don't really understand them all they do is they look at the sort of broader pictures which are more narrative and they ask questions around those images so we cover sex we cover interuterine insemination we cover sperm and egg donation ivf surrogacy adoption and we also, as well as discussing all of these topics and looking at how a baby grows and also how it's born, a vaginal birth versus a C-section, for example, which isn't really covered in many other books. We also talk about more difficult subjects, such as what happens when a baby's born too soon or what happens, why do some babies not grow? Mm. So, so we're really trying to... I think the most important thing about this book is, I think for a lot of people, they grow up with a sense of kind of shame and... Um, anxiety around talking about sex and explaining sex maybe because that's the way they were raised or they don't feel confident talking to their children about it so the reason we created this book was really to just give parents confidence in having a springboard into having bigger conversations with their kids this is all written in really simple language we don't use any of those terms i've just talked about other than sex we don't use ivi iui or ivs we just talk about how does the sperm meet the egg these are the mm. ways a sperm meets an egg. You need a sperm, an egg, and a place for it to grow, you know, and a place for a baby to grow. Those are the three magic things you need to make a baby. And then we just very factually look at how you put those things together in different ways. Is this a book that, you know, one of the challenges that parents always have is that uh, aspect of explaining the birds and the bees mm -hmm. to, to, to children. Does this help or you help them resolve that issue and you know, get out uncomfortable? Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think, I think also if you have a, there are lots of different ways to approach this book and it, and every family is different. Every parent is different. Everyone raising a child is going to approach this in a different way because there is no right or wrong way to do it. But I think there's so much, you do want your children to know this information and to know accurate information before they're suddenly immersed in the world of smartphones and the internet when they're teenagers and can pick up all kinds of misinformation. You do want them to know the truth. And, and I think this book is really useful tool for allowing parents to find a way into that. So for a young child, you might just show them the page and you might not read any of the text. You might just ask them, what do you see in the picture? What do you think is happening? When I show my son that page, he's four, with the about sex, he just says, the room is so messy. There are clothes <laughs> all over the floor. And Where I are their clothes? <laughs> exactly. And I say, yes, because for these two people, in order for them to make a baby, they've had to take off their clothes. So even though you might not go into the full detail. You're already starting to mm. introduce them to ideas around around how babies are made 
and so if they're not if they're not embarrassed by it hopefully you won't be embarrassed by it and vice versa as an adult you can be confident and not be embarrassed by what you're talking about your children will feel comfortable coming to you with questions Mm -hmm. I think this is so important too, because one of the challenges people have is they don't, they don't have these conversations with their children. I know so many girls when I was uh, a teenager they were getting pregnant. They're like, I, I didn't really fully understand. I thought pulling out was fine. And the, all these variations they had, they didn't really have a full, complete knowledge. I know yeah. it sounds weird, but they just didn't. And because people, of it, they got people. pregnant very early. Yeah. So this book is really clear. So this book goes straight from small children to adults and it skips the whole puberty thing because what we're trying to do is demystify the process of how babies are made we are actually working on a separate book at the moment which will be about that kind of growing up and trans- transition from childhood to adulthood and everything that entails but in this book because it's for very young children it's always for kind of six five six to kind of nine year olds it's not going into detail around puberty or anything like that or relationships even it's quite factual and scientific if two people want to make a baby if one of them has a penis and one of them has a vagina you can do it like this if people don't have sperm or eggs that work properly or they don't have a place to grow a baby you can do it like this Mm. so it's just it's much more basic at this level because it really is intended to be that very first introduction and here on on the kind of second page we have some naked babies and we're just talking about even properly labeling your own anatomy because there are there are adults who don't understand that um a vagina isn't the only part of a woman's genitalia (laughs) Mm. (laughs) so they don't know the word vulva or that if you don't Mm. have the right terminology how can you be expected to i don't know talk to a doctor if there's a problem if you if you don't know the proper words so it's and it's also a safety thing there are lots of studies that suggest that children who can accurately their anatomy and feel confident talking about it are less likely to um, be subject to abuse because the people who might be perpetrators will be aware that these are children that are comfortable talking about such things, therefore are more likely to talk to an adult <clears throat> if something untoward happens, mm. and also are more likely to be aware of things like consent and privacy because if their parents are talking to them about those things at a young age, they're going to be more aware of them. So there, there are many reasons for including information like that. And it's probably helpful, like you say, for a you know, stranger danger conversations you need to have with your children where you're like, hey, if somebody, you know, touches you in a certain place and, and does this, that, or the other, you need to tell dad, you need to, or mom, and you need to run off and that sort of thing. May, might help in that way? Yeah, exactly. I think it's, if you as a parent are confident in talking to your child about their body and about appropriate touching and inappropriate touching those children are just going to be more well informed so they are they're going to be hiding this kind of information or not giving children this information because you want to protect them isn't necessarily going to protect them nice nice that's important that's important people need to understand this and i've known so many people over the years who've uh, had trauma from childhood because their parents didn't talk to them or teach them i knew people i knew a lot of girls like i said in high school that got pregnant because they didn't fully understand like everything. And then I've really been surprised. I've dated women in their thirties that really don't have a good understanding of what that area is about going on down there and yeah. stuff. And you're just like, seriously, you live with this thing for, uh, your life. some people there's like a shame sometimes to sex or a shame to your body parts. If you come from certain religions, there's a shaming process that like, oh, this is dirty or this is bad or this is wrong. There's all this sort of thing that goes on that really, I think really confuses and help, uh, people. So this can be pretty helpful to them. Yeah. So this is the way we wrote it was that it was meant to be really friendly, not scary. And and an entry point, it's not mm-hmm. exhaustive. It's only 32 pages long. It's really designed to just be that kind of icebreaker to help you have those conversations. And it depends how much you want to explain. If you were a single parent who had chosen to go down the route of IVF, you might want to explain that to your child, or you might rather just explain all the different processes and, and not ever share that information. That's mm-hmm. your decision. But at least it gives you the springboard that if you did want to have that conversation, that process has been explained on a level playing field with every other way that a family begins. 
There you go. There you go. This has been pretty interesting. Now, where does the stork come in? Where does that come <laughs> the in stork after is all? in here, actually. It is is there really because, a stork in it? Yeah, yeah. The stork is in here because we talk about all the different myths, the myths that parents wow. tell children when they don't want to talk about it. And you can find, even with really young children, you can find really simple language. Like when my son was younger, for example, and he would ask, he'd see a picture of me and my husband at our wedding, and he would say, but where was I? Because you know they don't understand, <laughs> and we'd just say you were a tiny, you were a tiny. Like when he was smaller, now he has read this book, so he does understand. But when he was smaller, we would say you were a tiny piece of mummy and a tiny piece of daddy that hadn't met yet. So there are ways of in, even introducing that concept when they're really young, and then when they start asking questions, how did those two pieces meet? Mm. This book gives you the answers. Awesome. Awesome. This is good. I should read this. I haven't had any kids yet. and Clearly, I'm not, I haven't learned something. So that or it could be the vasectomy. I'm not sure. What, but uh, anything more you want to plug out on the book before we go out? I just think if you feel anxious about talking to your children about sex or about where babies come from, that it's really, that books are really helpful. Either this book or any other book you feel is the right book for you. They are such a helpful tool because they're, it, it can be a shared experience and it can really help to kind of bridge the gap and paper over any cracks in your confidence. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. the other thing is too, I should mention, kids learn a lot of weird stuff in like elementary school and junior high. I was totally confused because my friends would tell me stuff and be like, what? That sounds like way different than what my mom told me. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I think this is really important to have something like this for them. Thank you. There you go. So, Rachel, it's been wonderful to have you. Give us your plugs so people can find you on the interwebs, please. So you can find this book wherever good books are sold. It's published by Penguin Random House, Dial for Young Readers. So you can also go to their website to find out more about it. There you go. Pick up the book, guys. Making a Baby, June 22, 2021. Just came out with Rachel Greener. I think this is really important. Like I said, I, I met so many people that – I'm really surprised at how far they get in life and they're really they're not familiar with their own bodies. They're not familiar. They've dealt with shaming or some sort of some sort of thing where it's, oh, that's a bad thing. And we're all just human. We just need to really just understand who the heck we are. And this, yeah. uh, I think this makes it great. Because I, if I was a dad, I'd just be like, here, read this. This is the Birds and the Beast story <laughs> and we're never going to speak of this again. Uh, <laughs> if you have questions, call Rachel. No, I'm just kidding. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Go to YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Voss, hit the bell notification, Goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss, and all of our groups on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and everything else. Thank you very much for being on the show with us, Rachel. We certainly appreciate it today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Miles, for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.